Terry. I'm home. Oh, just look at this place. Hello, pet. Have a good day at the office? <laughs> now drink that while it's hot. Now, is this supposed to be here? Is this supposed to be here? Oh, I must have left them there when I had a snack. And I wish you wouldn't stub your fags out in the rubber plant. Oh, and I must have done that when I went to answer the door. A tall lady in galoshes was collecting for war on want. Now, that doesn't live there now, does it? Well, that is there because I'm trying to do everything at once. Answering the door and clearing up and getting your dinner ready. I haven't stopped today, you know. I haven't stopped. <laughs> Did Selma ring? No. She didn't call round or anything? No, mate. Not, not unless it was when I was down at the shops. Do you know, I stood for 15 minutes in that butcher's. <laughs> Are you sure she didn't ring? No, not unless it was while I was out. All oh, those friends of yours, Morris and Pauline, rang. Wanted to know if you'd go to their anniversary party. Oh, yes. I turned it down. <laughs> You what? On your behalf. Well, why I'd like to have gone to that, get myself out of myself. The invitation was for you and Thelma as a couple. And as you no longer exist as a couple, I thought it best to turn it down. I'm going. <laughs> what do you mean you're going? To make the numbers up, they're too short now. <laughs> Anyhow, when the word gets out that you and Thelma are separated... We're, we're not separated. We're estranged. You know right to turn it down. You're not my social secretary. I'd like to have gone to that. You're here to give me strength in a difficult period in my life. To give me strength and, and cheer me up and get me dinner ready. Where is it? It'll be ready in a minute. I've been slaving over hot stove all afternoon. Forgot to switch it off again, did you? Pardon? The reason the stove gets so hot is because you forget to switch it off. That's how you burn the bottom out of that non-stick pan. Part of a set that was, you know, is a wedding present, that. From Doreen and Tom. Well, it wasn't my fault. It said distinctly on the packet, simmer gently. Yes, yeah, simmer gently for seven to nine minutes, not four and a half hours. <laughs> well, I forgot. Well, of course you forgot, just like you forget to put water in the poacher. That was a wedding present and all, you know. Brian and Anne gave us that. Who gave you the pop-up toaster? Pam and Diver. Why? Well, that's knackered now. <laughs> Oh, how can you break a toaster? All you do is you put the bread in and you press a lever. Even you can't break a toaster. Well, it wasn't exactly bread I put in it. <laughs> what was it? Chops. <laughs> you put chops in the toaster? For your dinner, to defreeze them. They were solid, man. It just seemed the best way of doing it. Well, don't be stupid. You just leave them out for a few hours. If you want to hurry them up, you just shove them under the grill. Well, I didn't know which was the switch for the grill. I can't work, Gas. What were you doing with chops anyway? We we're going to have liver. When I went out of the house this morning, you distinctly said we were going to have liver and bacon and semolina pudding. We were. Until I lost the liver. <laughs> How could you lose the liver? Well, either it fell down that garbage disposal thingy or the cat did it. <laughs> We haven't seen that cat since last night. Maybe he's gone down the garbage disposal. <laughs> Dear me. What's that smell? Is somebody burning rubbish? No, it's me. I'm burning semolina. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, look at this kitchen. Dear oh. me, look at this grease. Oh. You need a knife to get that off. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. Oh, oh dear. Now what? The dish is cracked. <laughs> Has it? Was that a wedding present? Yes, yes, that was a wedding present as well. Auntie Beatty. Oh, well, she'll never know. She doesn't get out much with her bad leg. I'll give you the list tomorrow. What list? Of all the wedding presents. Then you can work your way through the house. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this table. Well, I'm doing the best I can. I'm up the gallop and rotten gourmet, you I'm know. I'm sorry, I know you're not. Me? I'm sorry, I've said I'm sorry. Look. I've got a tin of apricots. We could have them. I'm not hungry. And there's some bacon from the liver and bacon. We can have bacon and uh, apricots. <laughs> I'd really rather not. Oh, I suppose it's times like this when you miss Thelma the most. When you come home for a casserole and a cuddle. I noticed that when I left my wife. Meal times and bedtimes are the hardest part. 
Aren't they? Yes, the bedtime's the worst. And it seems such a big bed without Thelma. It's got to cut a slope to it. I've never noticed that before. I keep rolling to the edge. Whereas before, I'd just roll into Thelma. I'm not sleeping. What do you mean you're not sleeping? Not a wink. You snore when you're awake, do you? Pardon? You were making a hell of a racket when I came up last night. Well, I only just got off. I I'm not sleeping at all. And you were hard enough to wake this morning when I brought you a cup of tea. Well, I'd only just got off then. And you were sound asleep when I went along the landing at dawn for a Jimmy Riddle. <laughs> I am not sleeping. Look at my eyes. You're not getting enough iron. The liver will put you right. But you've lost the liver. Oh, I. <laughs> well, look, let's just go out for a meal. No, thanks. We'll go for a curry to that place at the Kashmir. Now, you love curry. You don't. You hate it. Well, I'll just have egg and chips. They do egg and chips there. I hate that. What, egg and chips? No, people that go to Indian restaurants and have egg and chips, it's so insulting to the Indians. They come all the way from the Kashmir, they go to a lot of trouble with exotic herbs and spices, and then someone like you comes in and has egg and chips and a pint of lager. It's embarrassing. It says on the window, Anglo-Indian cuisine. Anyway, the people who run that place do not come all the way from Kashmir. They come from South Shields. <laughs> he told me that his granddad fought on the northwest frontier. Well, he must have meant Cumberland. Because <laughs> I'll tell you something, mate. He might wear a turban, but he's a third-generation Geordie. He's still an Indian with an Indian's heritage and an Indian sensitivity. And I don't like going there with people like you who order English food and call the waiters Gunga Din. <laughs> I never realised you were such an Indian lover. Not just Indians. I feel sorry for any foreign waiters with people like you around. I never able to show me face in Don Luigi's again after going there with you. Well, I'll have no sense of humour, these Italians. They have, Terry. They have. They're famed. Famed for their warm-hearted, fun-loving hospitality. They just get bored with a constant stream of jokes about the Mafia. <laughs> Much as the manager of the Golden Dragon took exception to you calling him Kung Fu. <laughs> Well, look, then, we'll just go to an English restaurant. We'll go to an English ordinary steakhouse. Or we could get some fish and chips. We could go down the Wheat Chief later. There's music down the Wheat Chief tonight. No, I've no desire to go out. No desire whatsoever. Look, I have been working my fingers to the bone. I'm entitled to be taken out tonight. <laughs> so like my wife. I feel like your rotten wife. I can understand why she left you now. You show more concern for Indians and Chinamen than you do for your loved ones. That is not a nice thing to say. Is that a nice thing to say? Is that a nice thing to say to someone who's just separated from his wife? Estranged. Terry, I am grief-stricken. I'm going through a very traumatic period. Some people, when they split up from their wife, they just use it as an excuse to enjoy themselves and go out and get drunk and chase spare. I'm sure you did. I did, as a matter of fact. Did me a world of good. <laughs> yes, well, we're different people, Terry, you and I. I. I take things more seriously. I feel things more deeply. I haven't got your insensitivity. I'm not very clear about anything at the moment, Terry, except that I love Thelma, and I miss her, and I wish she was here. Oh, come on, kidder. Things will work out. Oh, cheer up, Bob. You go on like this, you'll end up with your head in the gas oven. Well, not that one, I wouldn't. It's filthy. <laughs> I wouldn't be seen dead in that gas oven. <laughs> Thelma Pet. Oh, hello, Audrey. How are you? Oh, full of the cold, but you know. And the children? Oh, they're fine. Well, Fleur's had a bit of an earache and Wayne's had his chest, but oh. you know. Oh, well, how's Ernie? Oh, he's been in bed all week with some allergy. But we're finding ourselves. Oh. Look, Thelma, I don't want you to think that... Well, I can't pretend I haven't heard about you and Bob. Well, I mean that Bob... Well, that things aren't... You mean you've heard I've left Bob? Oh, well, I didn't know it was that drastic. <laughs> well, I'm at my mother's and he's at home with your brother, so how drastic can it get? Oh, Terry! Well, what's he been up to now? Look, it's not his fault, not entirely. I just know that he's staying round there. Well, it can't make things any easier, Thelma. Well, it doesn't help, put it that way, no. Audrey. I'll... Now look, Pep, 
I don't want you to think that I'm one of these people that you don't hear from for ages, who no. turns up at the slightest hint of disaster. But if there's anything I can do, anything at all, Pet, don't hesitate. Please don't hesitate. I'm not unfamiliar with this sort of thing, you know. It hasn't all been plain sailing with our Ernie. It's not easy being married to an alcoholic hairdresser. <laughs> Ernie's not an alcoholic. He drinks too much too often, and that's alcoholic in my book. Well, our problems have never stemmed from Bob's drinking. Drink. Oh, no, Pet, I didn't mean to infer. It's just, well, you mustn't hesitate. You can come over tonight if you like. No, I think I just have a quiet night in. Get yourself out of yourself. Well, everyone tells me that. What on earth does it mean? Well, please yourself, but if you change your mind, don't hesitate. Look, thanks, Audrey, but I think people have got to sort these things out for themselves, you know. But it was very sweet of you. Well, what are friends for, Pet? <laughs> well, there's just one thing, Audrey. Yes? A 26p overdue in this book. <laughs> oh, I see. I have found the liver. Oh, where was it? In my raincoat pocket. <laughs> oh, of course, I borrowed your coat when I went down to the butcher's. It was on the hall stand, dripping blood all over the new carpet. Cold water, that's a thing for blood. Will cold water help my Mac? Why did you wear my Mac? Well, I haven't got one. All my stuff's at home. Why did you wear my new Mac? What was wrong with my old Mac? Oh, uh, well, I gave that to the lady from War on Want. <laughs> my lovely old Mac? I've had that for years. Yes, I can see that. That's why I give it away. Well, I want that back. Oh, don't be stupid, man. It'll be halfway to Kashmir by now. <laughs> My extendable steel rule was in the pocket. Well, I'm sure they'll find a good use for it there. Now, look, do you want me to cook that liver for you? No, thank you. Not now. The all fluffy now and taste of gabardine. <laughs> It'll do for the cat if we ever find him. Look, don't worry about the cat. Well, I do worry about the cat, Terry. He's not ours, you know. He belongs to the people next door. I'm just looking after him. He belongs to the people next door who've gone to a wedding in Pontefract. What am I supposed to say when they come back and ask, where's Ginger? I'm not sure where he is. He's disappeared. He might have gone down the waste disposal. <laughs> well, I'm not sure that he did. It's just that, well, it made a very funny noise. <laughs> yes, well, they always do. Yes, but yours sort of went... <laughs> not funny, Terry. Not oh, funny one little bit. God, no sense of humour, some people. And you haven't cleaned out that oven yet. Well, I will do, I will. I'll do it in the morning. Can I ask you one question? What? Why, at half past eight of an evening, are you in pyjamas and dressing gown? I've just had a hot bath, haven't I? Well, I hope you wipe the bath around after you. Yes, I always do. Oh, you can't get me for that. I haven't had a bath. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> Pardon? Three days you've been here and you haven't had a bath. I haven't had time for a bath. You can have one last thing at night. I didn't want to wake you. You won't wake me. I'm not sleeping, remember? Oh, look, Bob, put some clothes on, eh? And let's go and have a nice, quiet drink. No, oh, thanks. I don't want to go out. I've just had a hot bath. Well, you can wrap up warm. We've got the car. I don't want to go out. I just want a quiet evening in with the television. There's nothing on. Well, there must be something on. I've had a look. There's an inquiry into mental health, a programme about accidents in the home, and a documentary on wildlife up the Amazon, and you can't watch that because you're terrified of spiders. They give you nightmares. How can I get nightmares when I'm not sleeping? And there's a party political broadcast on at 9.50. That's always good for a laugh. <laughs> That's not on, is it? Aye, uh, all three channels and all. <sighs> Dear me, what a terrible night. There's a film on. Oh, a Polish masterpiece. Quite, with subtitles. What a terrible night. <sighs> Look, Bob, if you come out for a drink, it'll, it'll get yourself out of yourself. No, Thelma might ring. Oh, look, if you want to speak to Thelma, for God's sake, ring her. Certainly not. I've got my pride. I'm not speaking to her, remember? Well, if you're not speaking to her, why are you going to wait in all night in case she rings? Just so I can make it perfectly clear that I'm not speaking to her. Oh. <laughs> she left me, remember? I did not leave her, she left me. Look. I'm not going to say it again. I'll give you one last chance. Are you coming out with me or not? No. Just because Thelma's gone, you think I'm going to leap at the chance of having a drink with you every night? Oh, Bob, when Thelma was here, you were out having a drink with me almost every night. Yes, and perhaps if I'd seen less of you, I wouldn't be in this situation. Oh, what a nice thing to say. 
What a nice thing to say, though, but to your best friend who spent half the morning down the butchers. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. It has to be said. Over the years, your presence has had a... Well, it has to be said. A destructive influence on Thelma and me. What a terrible thing to say. I was your best man. Yes, and even at the altar you were telling me where I could get a quick divorce. <laughs> that was just a joke, man, to take your mind off the horror that was to follow. There you go again. Well, that was just another joke. But it isn't funny. Listen, Bob, I have never consciously tried to cause trouble between you and Thelma. All right, I've had my differences with Thelma, almost as many as you. But I have never consciously tried to stir it between you and her. You didn't help on Monday. Thelma might be here now if you'd sent those flowers. I'll never forgive you. Five quid I gave you to send flowers and you never got past the betting shop. I'll pay you back. You'll get your money. That is not the point. That is not the point. I gave you five quid for flowers. That is not the point. I shall never forgive you. I did buy some flowers. You did not buy some flowers. You stole some flowers from the gardens opposite the raid's office. Well, Thelma still got them. It's the thought that counts. If she had got what I originally intended, a large bouquet of flowers wrapped in cellophane with a pink ribbon, then she might have been impressed with the thought. What's she going to think about a bunch of marigolds <laughs> wrapped in an old daily mirror shoved through a letterbox? <laughs> oh, if only that horse had come up, she could have opened her own rotten flower shop. I suppose if another of your horses had come up, we might have got something to eat tonight. What is that supposed to mean? It just means that I'm wondering, Terry, what you are doing with the housekeeping, frankly. Ten quid I gave you on Monday for the housekeeping, and I've seen precious little for it, except for a bunch of carrots, a tin of fruit, and some rather fluffy liver. <laughs> and the bacon, and a tin of semolina. How much does it cost? Eight pounds a tin? It's semolina, not caviar. I want to see the bills. I want to see the receipts. I paid the milk bill, you know, and the papers and the laundry. I also made a contribution to the lifeboat fund and I've got a flag to prove it. I can account for every penny. Oh, of course you can in the betting shop. Right. That's it. You can go so far. I can take so much, but that is it. Three days of living with you has certainly made me appreciate Thelma's point of view. I don't know why you got married. You don't need a wife, you. You need a housekeeper. Somebody to cook your meals and balance your books. Well, I'll tell you one thing, mate. I have been very tolerant these last few days, but it's got to be said, you are impossible to live with. <laughs> where are you going? I'm leaving you. That's where I'm going. <laughs> I am leaving you just like Thelma did. You want to think about that, mate? That's two people who have left you inside a week. <laughs> Three, if you count the cat. <laughs> Hello, Thelma. Um, I was just passing and uh, I... Can I come in? Oh, y yes, of course. Oh. I, I, I hope I'm not... Uh... No, 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 there's no one in. Well, uh, take your coat off. Uh, is it raining? A little. Oh. Bob's got a Mac like that. Well, that is Bob's Mac. Oh. What are these blood stains? He hasn't had an accident, has he? Is that why you've come round? No, no, Thelma, that's not Bob's blood. That was liver. Liver? It's calves' liver. Oh. For his supper. Oh. Oh, well, you better come through. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Thelma, if you're watching the box. Oh, I was only half watching. It's about nuns in 14th century Poland. Philip Jenkinson said it was a masterpiece in the Radio Times. But I found it very heavy going. Uh, there was a film on the other week about nuns. Uh, Joan Collins was this nun, if you can believe that. She was in this open boat with these men. Only the men didn't know she was a nun, you see, because she'd lost her habit. <laughs> do, you, do you want to sit down? Oh, cheers. Deborah Kerr. Uh, she was a nun in a film once. Audrey Hepburn. The nun story. Well, there must be a call for them. Uh, Films about nuns. <laughs> Do you want some tea or something? No, no, thanks, Thelma, no. Would you like a drink or No, something? no, really, really. How is Bob? 
Well, it's about Bob that I called. He has had an accident. No, no, honestly, Thelma, no. It's, it's just that, um... Well, you should have had some flowers on Monday. I did get some. Marigolds? It was difficult to tell. <laughs> well, I, I didn't mean those. Um, you should have had a, a big bouquet wrapped in cellophane and pink ribbon. Uh, only you didn't, and Bob seems to think it was my fault, and... Uh, well, Bob seems to think a lot of things are my fault. Oh, you're not to blame, Terry. Not entirely. No, of course I'm not. I mean, you can see that, Thelma, with your grammar school education. I mean, you see things a lot more clear than what he does. <laughs> I mean, I said to him, have I ever tried to stir things between you and Thelma? Well, you know the answer to that. Yes. <laughs> but he has upset me today, Thelma. And when I think how long I've known him, since 1948, to be exact, since then, we've, we've done everything together. All those years, we've had the same friends, the same hobbies, the same girls, the, a, a present company excluded, of course. Though. Well, you tried hard enough once. <laughs> Did I? When was that? That trip to Blackpool. Why? Mm. Oh, well, that was a long time ago, Thelma. We were very young, and I was inflamed with a brown ale, and, well, you know what... <laughs> You know what these coach trips are like. It was dark and confused. And anyway, I thought you were somebody else. <laughs> I didn't mean that I didn't find you attractive, Thelma, as a woman. I, I've always been very aware of you as a woman. It, it's just that, well, even then, all that time ago, you were always Bob's girl. I mean, even when you weren't speaking to each other like now, it was always Bob and Thelma. Even when he was having that frantic scene with Briony Hood, he still... Briony Hood? When was this? Oh, that, that, um... I I remember Briony Hood only too well. She broke her father's heart. She went to a convent and ends up dancing topless in a Sunderland discotheque. Really? <laughs> broke her father's heart. Mind you, she did have a fantastic pair well, of... that's no <laughs> There's no reason to flaunt them in front of the teenage population of Wearside. Quite. And Bob had a frantic scene with her, did he? Oh, that was long before she went topless. <laughs> Bob's never let on about that. Oh, Thelma, please, I... I'm not consciously trying to stir things. I, what I'm trying to say is that you and Bob belong together. He's in a terrible state without you, you know. He feels things very deeply and... Well, he loves you and despite his faults, he's... He's a good lad, one of the best, and I just think that you should be there with him now. He's all alone. Thought you were with him. Oh, I've packed it in, I've left him. <laughs> Driving me round the bend. Expects his meals on the table the minute he walks in through the door. Yes, he does, doesn't he? And everything has got to be absolutely in the right place. Well, I'm as tidy as the next person, but with him it's an obsession, a fetish. I know, I know. He was like that at school, do you remember? Oh, yes, his desk, everything in its place, his crayon sharpened. In the scouts, he used to have pleats ironed in the back of his shirt. Well, I still have to do that for his shirts, and it cost me a fortune at the dry cleaners. Don't! I was in there only yesterday with some of his stuff, and I never realised the cost of cleaning. Yeah, then he asked you where the money goes. But he doesn't realise, Thelma. He doesn't have to do the shopping. <laughs> he doesn't realise how the cost of living has risen. He doesn't have to spend all morning in the supermarket or the cleaner. Do you know I stood for 15 minutes in that butcher's this morning? This was the liver? The calves liver, yes. He likes that. He didn't actually get it. <laughs> How is he in himself? He's a bundle of nerves. Is he sleeping? No. He's snoring a lot, but he's not sleeping. <laughs> Gets my teeth on edge, that. Oh, mine too. <laughs> Do you know, Terry, we've got one thing in common. What? He drives us both mad. <laughs> Oof. Audrey, come in, love. Come oh, well, in. just for a minute, then. I shan't stop. What are you doing? I'm trying to clean up. this blood everywhere. What have... <laughs> what have you done? Well, it's not me. It's Terry. You haven't murdered him. <laughs> not yet. Nobody would blame you if you did, Pet. Do you know, Audrey's turned this place into a pigsty. <gasps> come on through. Oh, look, 
shall not stop, but I only pop round while the party political was on, because I don't want you to think that I'm one of these people who you don't hear from for ages, who turns up at the first hint of disaster. But if there's anything I can do, anything at all, Pet, don't hesitate. Thank you very much, Audrey. You are kind, but I think this is the kind of thing I've got to sort out for myself, you know. I know, Pet. But sometimes it helps to get out and see friends, you know. It gets yourself out of yourself. You're more than welcome to come and sleep at our place. I don't sleep, Audrey. Oh, I'm not, I'm not surprised, Pet. I've been through this sort of thing myself, you know. I'm not unfamiliar. Yes, well, we'll just have to see how things work out. It will. What? Work out. Well, we'll just have to see. <laughs> well, look, I can't stop. Where's our Terry? Is he out drinking? I don't know, Audrey. He's gone, you see. He's left me. <laughs> Must be something about me, some quality that makes people leave me. Oh, I don't. I don't think I'm difficult to live with, do you? Oh, don't be silly, Bob. Of course you're not. Audrey, did you wipe your feet? I've only just done this floor. Oh, I'm ever so sorry, Bob. Well, look, I can't stop. You're leaving me, in other words. But I said I could You're stay. leaving me. You're leaving me just like all the others. <laughs> Cheers. Bob and Thelma. Cheers. I suppose Bob is just a habit that I've got to get out of. Like Joan Collins and that boat. Pardon? Oh, yes, yes, very witty, Thelma, yes, yes. <laughs> Who on earth's that? It's not your mother, is it? No, no, it's playing bridge with the Avisons. Oh. oh, hello, Audrey. Hello, Thelma Pet. Look, I can't stop, but I thought I'd better rush over. Oh, it's just that I... What are you doing here? I am having a quiet drink with my friend Thelma. Terry's been very sweet. Very sweet and understanding. Terry has? This Terry? Yes, he has. He's been telling me to get back to Bob. Oh, and I think you should, Pet. The sooner the better. I've just been round there to see how he is and he's behaving most peculiarly. He's gone all morbid and depressed and he's brandishing this knife. Listen, I'll ring him. I'll tell him I'm on my way. Is he terribly depressed? Well, yes, I can't pretend he isn't. I think he thinks everybody's against him. And he's very worried about Ginger. <laughs> just left him in his dressing gown. I must go to him. Oh. Thelma, you're getting oven stick all over your blouse. <laughs> 